So I'd like to uh, welcome our witnesses for the first panel. Um, as an individual, we have Richard Gray, professor from the Department of Agriculture and Resource Economics uh, from the University of Saskatchewan by video conference. We have uh, Tristan Skolrud, associate professor, University of Saskatchewan, also by video conference. And now we'll start with uh, Professor Gray. You have the floor for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm a professor and a grain policy chair at the University of Saskatchewan. I also provide labor and marketing advice for my son, Eric, who operates a 3,000 acre family grain farm in Indian Head, Saskatchewan. And by the way, we rely on grain aeration and do not own a grain dryer. In the absence of explicit policies that recognize the role of crop production plays in the removal of atmospheric carbon, I'm in favor of the tax relief offered in Bill C-234. I would go further to advocate public investments in research and extension and direct producer support for investments in less greenhouse gas intensive grain drying and heating options. As a well-trained economist, I understand that pollution pricing is an efficient way to incorporate external pollution costs into private decision making. As a grain farmer and an agricultural science graduate, I also recognize that every ton of harvested grain contains more than a ton and a half of CO2 that was removed from the atmosphere. Ideally, this, sequest this sequestration of carbon should be subsidized at the external cost of carbon. Similarly, when grain is consumed or burned, the carbon emission should be taxed at this same rate. Unfortunately, neither the sequestration of carbon in grains nor the emissions from burning grain are included in the global greenhouse gas accounting system. For example, the CO2 that you're breathing out this afternoon is not included as part of the Canadian greenhouse gas emissions, nor the CO2 emissions that come from livestock or from trucks burning biodiesel. CO2 emissions coming from burning or digesting grain and other biomass are deemed to be emission-free. They're, they're assumed to be emissions-free only because it is also assumed that some farmer has recently removed this carbon from the atmosphere. While treating biofuel emissions as carbon-free works well for the biofuel industry and consumers, the farmer that has actually removed the carbon from the atmosphere receives no explicit credit for this sequestration. I first realized this flaw in greenhouse, counting, greenhouse gas accounting about three years ago, looking at about 4,000 tons of harvested grain, all rich in carbon, all of which had come from the atmosphere. Since then, I've done a lot of reading and discovered that Searchinger and others pub published an article in 2009 in Science, perhaps the most prestigious journal in the world, entitled, Fixing a Critical Climate Accounting Error. Despite over 600 citations to this important article, the flaw in the accounting system is not being addressed. By not measuring grain-related emissions, the incomplete accounting creates strong incentives to use grain to produce biofuels. However, because the grain sequestration is not measured, there's no corresponding incentives to produce the additional grain required for the biofuel. Searchinger and many others, including myself, argue the effect of this is higher grain prices, increased food insecurity, and the carbon intensive clearing of rainforest and peatlands for agricultural production. Given that it's unlikely Canada can change this flawed international Canada accounting, Canadian policy makers need to keep a fundamental policy trade off in mind. If the Canadian taxation of greenhouse gases or other policies result in fewer grain exports, these reduced exports will increase international grain prices and will have to be accommodated in the rest of the world, either through reduced food consumption or increased greenhouse gas emissions elsewhere. By removing the taxation of grain for grain drying, I believe the amendments contained in Bill C-234 may approximately align with this broader global perspective. Finally, Mr. Chair, I recognize the enormous power of research and innovation to solve these problems. Finding ways to effectively reduce greenhouse gas emissions is an important public good problem that requires public investment. Research investment is needed to continue to develop more sustainable grain dryer and heating options. 
programs that help producers to benchmark their emissions relative to similar farms may help them identify opportunities for reduction. And finally, using subsidies to increase investment in more efficient systems can reduce emissions without jeopardizing our grain production that is needed, so much needed in the rest of the world. With that, that Mr. Chairman concludes my remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gray, and right on time. Uh, now we'll go to uh, Mr. Skolrud for five minutes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to thank the committee for the opportunity to appear today to discuss Bill C-234, which would eliminate carbon pricing on a farmer's use of natural gas and propane for grain drawing and heating. The issue of carbon pricing in agriculture is contentious and complicated for many reasons that are already well understood by members of this committee. Food is perhaps one of society's most basic and pressing needs, and any measure that increases the cost of producing food is understandably met with a great deal of trepidation. However, Canada has also pledged to reduce emissions by at least 40% below 2005 levels by 2030, with the goal of net zero emissions just 20 years later. It would be prudent to achieve this goal at the lowest total cost to society. There are low cost mitigation opportunities in the agricultural sector that could be exploited to keep the cost of this GHG reduction goal as low as possible. But despite the fact that the agricultural sector accounts for approximately 10% of Canada's total GHG emissions, the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act has used a mostly laissez-faire approach for the sector, leading to the exemption of well over 8.2% of Canada's total GHG emissions from carbon pricing. Bill, Su Bill C-234 seeks to expand that exemption to one of the few remaining areas of agricultural emissions covered by the Act, grain drying and heating. To understand the economic implications of this amendment, especially with respect to grain drying, I would like the committee to bear in mind the following points. When the price of an input increases, there are two effects for farms operating in competitive markets. One effect is to substitute, to change to a different set of inputs that haven't been as influenced by the price change. At the current state of technology, this effect is minimal, relying on changes to harvest practices that will vary by region, weather, and crop type. The other effect is to reduce output, but in this case, the size of the price increase is unlikely to elicit a strong output effect. At current crop prices, it's still profitable to dry even at a higher cost. It may be that producers choose to dry their grain slightly less than before to ensure that they do not pay more to dry than they would earn from having drier grain. But producers may be unable to make this adjustment if they're selling to grain buyers with specific moisture requirements, which is common. So with limited changes in producer behavior, there will be limited reductions in GHG emissions from grain drying before greener alternatives become available. However, removing the carbon pricing exemption will have an effect on the investment in grain drying alternatives that emit fewer GHGs. The development of greener alternatives will require significant private capital, and if grain drying is unregulated, the signal to private capital will be lost. Previous testimony on this amendment suggests that sufficient alternatives are at least 10 years away, Keep in mind that this estimate is a function of the carbon price. A higher price will shorten that time frame if private capital senses a profitable opportunity. Absent Bill C-234, the money spent on grain drying and heating by the agricultural sector is still returned to the sector, albeit at levels that are unlikely to exactly cover a single farmer's outlay. Some farmers will receive less than they paid, and some will receive more. And so, from an economic perspective, the question is as follows. Will the social welfare costs of redistributing income from larger energy-intensive farms to less energy-intensive farms through uneven rebate distribution outweigh the gains from the investment signal sent by keeping the price in place? Based on what we understand about the efficiency of carbon taxation and the government's estimate of the social cost of carbon, my opinion is no. The cost of exempting grain drying and heating from carbon taxation will not outweigh the long-term benefit. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh